Good morning on this balmy winter day. It's 37 degrees Fahrenheit uh, just before the New Year's holiday here. Uh, for today's video, hopefully it'll be a lot shorter than my previous video on relays. In this example, this is more of a demonstration and perhaps showing you a couple of different techniques within MicroPython if you're learning that. Uh, but we're showing you how to utilize uh, in this case, six uh, relays. And of course, this could be expanded to many more. But uh, the things to understand here is that <clears throat> uh, we're using six relays. We're going to be drawing, I think it's about 350 milliamps, which is impossible to do out of a Pico. Uh, so we're showing how you accomplish that. I'm going to be driving high-powered LEDs uh, which are way too, uh, use way too much current to be connected directly to a Raspberry Pi uh, Pico's output. Uh, thus, we're needing the relays. Uh, in this example, we're using two different types of relays. Uh, four of them are uh, actual relays, they're read relays uh, with no additional circuitry, and then the other two are on a module like you would buy on Amazon or eBay, etc. So this is a good overall circuit uh, to understand working with uh, multiple relays and much more current uh, than you probably have been doing with a Pico if you're learning uh, programming and how to work with microcontrollers. We're going to start this discussion by looking at the schematic because it's a whole lot scary, less scary than looking at the breadboards. Uh, here on our, our uh, fritzing diagram, uh, the first thing to understand, uh, we would be powering the Raspberry Pi Pico with a different power source than what's handling the relays and the LEDs. So in this case, it's being powered by USB. Uh, we're going to take all the outputs and run them through a buffer chip called a ULN2803. I've got another video explaining all the details of that, uh, so I'll reference that in the link below. From the ULN2803, we go up to each of the six different relays, uh, one side of the coil. The other side of the coil of that goes to uh, the positive side of our external power supply which is denoted here by a, a group of batteries. In the case of what I'm doing here on the workbench, it's actually my bench power supply uh, set at five volts. Uh, from there, we've got our relays. Uh, everything is set up on a normally open contact. And uh, from there, we're drawing power off of the power rail here from our external power supply. That would go through the relay when activated. Power would go through this resistor, which is a 50 ohm resistor. Uh, just a little bit of resistance in there so I don't blow up any of my uh, more expensive uh, high power white LEDs. Uh, I'm showing them as blue here. I think they're white on my board, but they were marked blue in the package. I picked them up from a, a bulk supply outfit. From there, uh, we connect the other side of the LED back to our ground rail, all the way back to our external power supply. So in truth, the circuitry is quite simple and straightforward. Uh, an output comes out of the Pico, goes through the buffer, connects to the coil of the relay. That, in turn, uh, activates the contacts, which has its own separate power supply. Uh, powering up uh, the LEDs as each relay comes into uh, uh, control of the Pico. So now we'll take a look uh, what we've got on the bench here. And as you can see, it, it's kind of scary. Um, I'm looking it up, at it up here on the monitor, and boy, it's just, to me, it's a rat's nest of wires. But um, I've done far more complex circuits uh, using jumpers and breadboards uh, than this. Uh, but just to give you a, a pointer of where everything is, here's obviously the Pico. Uh, down here is our ULN2803. I had plenty of room here on this circuit board, but I, for some reason, decided to use another breadboard. 
Um, these uh, jumpers go over to each of these four relays, and then two more jumpers come over to these two relays. These two obviously are on a module with optocouplers, transistors, and flyback diodes. Uh, again, these would be the type you pick up off of Amazon or eBay or some other outfit. Uh, from each of the relays going through uh, our LEDs, we're passing current through the relay on the contact side, through a 50 ohm resistor into the LED, and then on to the ground rail. And the same thing happens here on this fourth breadboard. Uh, it looks worse <laughs> on the breadboards than it does on the schematics. So don't panic if you're going to replicate something similar to this circuit. Just work one relay at a time, and it's a lot less scary. Before we run it, we'll take a quick look through the uh, source code or the Python program. Uh, some commentary up above to explain what this uh, demo program uh, called Many Relays is doing. Uh, we're going to load up a couple of libraries, basically just our machine library and a time library, the micro time library. Doesn't matter which one you use. Um, and then I'm going to create a list to hold all the relays. So we, each uh, output will be one element or uh, part of a re uh, list of relays. And then uh, we will just append each of these outputs to that list. And then here I'm going to go through that list and turn them all off. And we address that with relays, which is the name of the list, uh, which element number it is or item number it is. Uh, our n is indexing here 1 through 7. And we're going to set the value to 0, turning it off. Next up, we're going to go into a uh, pretty much an endless loop in this example, and we will iterate through that uh, list of uh, relays again in the range of 1 to 7. And for each relay item, Rn, we will set the value to 1, turning it thus on. And I'm going to print it so it shows up down below here, and I'll sleep for one second in between each of these. Then we will go through the same list, iterating through it to turn each of them off. So now we'll go ahead and we will uh, run the circuit and I will have the power supply uh, show up somewhere on one of the screens uh, so that you can understand uh, the load carrying capability of what we're doing here uh, that we wouldn't want on the Raspberry Pi Pico. All right, we'll hit the go button. We'll see each of the LEDs turn on in sequence. And notice how the power supply, the load is constantly increasing or now decreasing with each one turning off. Now what we're showing here is more than just the load of the LED. This is also showing you the current that each of these relays requires for actuation, turning uh, on. So. When it gets to the sixth and final one, you'll see it's at 310 milliamps, which is a substantial amount of power to be passing through a Pico. Uh, I don't know if it would blow it or not. Honestly, even though it's only $4, I'm not going to waste $4 just to prove it will or will not blow up. Uh, but hopefully this gives you an appreciation and an understanding of uh, how we deal with controlling high-powered uh, devices, many of them. We could expand this circuit to many more breadboards if you wanted, and many more relays. Uh, but how we can uh, drive higher currents, uh, not only through the ULN2803 chip, which is really just driving the coils, um, but we could also drive higher uh, current loads uh, and devices through the actual relays. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on working with ULN2803 as a buffer, multiple relays, how to put relays in a list so that they're easy to manage if you're doing sequencing or uh, light chasing type setups, etc. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.